After over a year of waiting, the WeatherXM team finally released their white paper. I read all 26 pages of this white paper, and in this video I'll summarize the good, the bad, and the ugly parts of this white paper, so that if you own a WeatherXM weather station, or are considering purchasing one, or just want to buy or sell the WXM token in the future, you'll be as informed as possible. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with this WeatherXM cryptocurrency project, let's start with a quick overview. WeatherXM is a blockchain-based platform that seeks to revolutionize the weather forecasting industry. The platform utilizes distributed ledger technology and a network of sensors to provide accurate, real-time weather forecasts. WeatherXM also provides a marketplace where users can purchase and sell weather data to one another. This data can then be used to improve existing weather models and develop new ones. The platform will also feature a rewards program, allowing users to earn rewards for contributing to the platform. The ultimate goal of WeatherXM is to provide a reliable and secure platform for weather forecasting. I personally have one WeatherXM weather station and it is currently fixed to the roof of my house. I've had no issues with it so far and I've been consistently earning testnet rewards for about six months now. I did initially purchase two weather stations, but I ended up flipping one of those weather stations for a quick profit back in July of 2022. Looking at recent eBay sales, these weather stations are currently selling anywhere between $250 and $400 on eBay. Or if you'd rather purchase these weather stations directly from WeatherXM, they're currently available on WeatherXM's website and they're going for 400 euros. This is the same price I paid back in early 2022. Now as a reminder, nothing in this video is financial advice and I'm not affiliated with WeatherXM in any way. I did do a previous video covering the WeatherXM project on this channel. I was quite critical at the time that the team did not have any sort of white paper. So I'm glad they got a white paper released and I guess it's better late than never. One eternity later. I'll link that video in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. So what I'm showing here on my screen is the most recent draft of the Weather XM white paper. I'll link this in the description below if you're interested in checking it out. So the Weather XM team starts off the white paper with an executive summary. We won't read that in detail here, but then they go into the importance of weather data for doing many different types of businesses. Uh, including agriculture, energy, transportation, tourism, aviation, shipping, event planning, and more. And they go into how small errors in weather data can have huge financial impacts and endanger people's lives. And then they basically say how having more reliable data points can make for more accurate weather data models. One thing that I learned that I hadn't thought about before when reading through this white paper was the impact the pandemic had on weather forecasting. At the beginning of the pandemic, meteorologists raised an alarm that the forecasting accuracy of weather models might dramatically decrease due to the grounding of aircrafts worldwide. The white paper went into detail on a study that was performed that found that when you total remove all aircraft weather observations, that forecasting accuracy of weather could be decreased by up to 50% and even more so in winter months. Who knew aircraft were responsible for so much of the collection of our weather data? I guess it makes sense. I just hadn't really thought about it that way before. Anyways, I thought that was interesting, so I wanted to share it with you. Back to the white paper. This is interesting. It's interesting. They start off with the goal of the project, which is to create a network, which is a core component of the project, which aims to become a dense, decentralized network of weather stations that lead to major improvements in the accuracy of forecasts, especially in areas that lack weather infrastructure. And then this WeatherXM network is a network created by weather stations that comply with specific specs and underlying infrastructure to use to connect them, and they exchange data and provide rewards. They then describe their company, WeatherXM AG, which is currently responsible for the manufacturing of weather stations and supporting the backend network of the project. Next, they talk about governance, which is an important aspect of any cryptocurrency project. Network governance will be the responsibility of WeatherXM AG until the project matures. And that's either once the number of WeatherXM circulating tokens is greater than 75 million tokens, which is expected to be in a little over three years, or when there's over 100,000 participating weather stations on the network. At that point, network participants can vote on a change to a different governance structure for the project. Currently, the intent of the company is to transition the governance to a foundation or a DAO in the future. I personally think this is a fantastic approach. I see too many projects out there currently that have insiders that own a vast majority voting share of the project, so they can basically force their will on the participants of the project. I've heard this complaint specifically about the Helium project. Next, let's look at the WeatherXM tokenomics, which is a very important part of any cryptocurrency project. The WXM token will be an ERC20 token, so that's an Ethereum-based chain token, so get ready to pay some gas fees to buy or sell your WXM tokens. There will be a fixed maximum supply of 100 million tokens, and then they have the allocations of the tokens here on this pie chart below. Now, the one big positive I see here is station rewards are allocated to 52% of the total token distribution, so it's good to see that the majority 
majority of the tokens are being rewarded to the actual weather station owners. We also have a 3% airdrop for beta participants, and I believe that's anyone who's uh, running a weather station prior to the actual release of the Weather XM token. Now they're expecting the Weather XM token to be released sometime in Q4 of 2023. So essentially it could be quite lucrative to run your weather station currently because then you would essentially be eligible for this 3% airdrop. Now the one big concern I have with the token allocation is the 30% allocation to the company investors. In my opinion, this seems like a quite high allocation, but you also have to understand that the company investors are taking pretty much all the risk on their side and they're doing all the legwork to stand up this project. So they should be rewarded. It just seems like a quite high allocation in my opinion. Next we go into the token emission schedule. What we can see here is we see some considerable inflation in terms of the number of tokens hitting the market until we hit a full saturation of 100 million tokens in 2028. And also of note the company and their investors will receive all their tokens in years one through three after which they'll receive no further tokens. And as you can see here, the rewards are heavily weighted in year three, and that's likely as an incentive for them to keep the project on track and achieve project timelines and milestones. Then they give some detail on the beta rewards airdrop, which is 3 million Weather XM tokens that'll be rewarded to early weather station owners. They then go into the purposes of the different tokens and the different pool allocations, which are really just utilizing tokens for investment, development, and liquidity for the project. Next, let's go over the WeatherXM ecosystem. They put together this nice diagram which shows the different parties involved and how they'll relate with one another. So as weather station owners, we'll provide weather data to the network, and in return for providing that data, we'll receive WXM tokens. Now, customers will wanna purchase this weather data, hopefully, and to purchase that weather data, they'll have to purchase WXM tokens to receive that data. So they'll send those tokens over to the WeatherXM team and in return, they'll receive the weather data that they're looking for. So essentially this creates a buy sell market where as station owners, we're selling our tokens to the future customers and then they're using those tokens to purchase the weather data and then we're receiving tokens for providing that weather data. So really it helps to create a market of buyer and sellers for the WXM tokens. At least that's the thought. Next, they go through the role of the Weather XM team for the first three years after the token launch. And the Weather XM team is responsible for all the hardware and R&D, all the backend infrastructure for the project, as well as providing the data to the network to potential customers. So being a market for customers to purchase the weather data. Next, they go into the different hardware that'll be used and Long term, they want to outsource a lot of the manufacturing of these weather stations to third party manufacturers. But the big concern I have with this is these manufacturers will have to comply with specific specs, but they will also have to pay an onboarding fee, which is currently $100 per device. Personally, this seems like a very steep price. It may be a cash grab attempt by the company. It could potentially disincentivize manufacturers from getting into this project. But this also may be a way for the team to try to ensure quality of devices. So I can see why they instituted this fee. It just seems like it may be a little steep at this point. Next, they go into the different revenue streams for the project. This is essentially detailing out what different customers will be wanting to use this data and purchase it. Now, this really is the biggest concern I have with this crypto project and pretty much all other crypto projects that are being built out right now. A use case or a data set for a project really means nothing unless you have a customer that's willing to purchase that data. Too many projects out there are building roads to nowhere. If you look at Helium and what they did with their IoT network, you know they built out a network of over a million hotspots, but no one's actually using that network. And I'm afraid that there's potential where WeatherXM could be on that same path. I hope I'm wrong here, but that is just a big concern I have right now with this project. So back to the revenue scene. So they detail out six different revenue streams, historical data, real-time weather data, uh, forecasting data, on-chain authoritative weather data, quality of weather data as a service, and then forecasting accuracy services. One thing I did find interesting is this data set will be available for free for personal use and free as well for academic use. Next, let's go over the big part that everyone cares about, the rewards. The amount of rewards you'll receive will be dependent on three factors. The location of your weather station, the quality of the weather data that you're providing, and business needs. They then go into great detail on the different hex cell rules and the reward calculation formulas. If you're familiar with Helium, it looks very similar to their rules, but I encourage you to look at it yourself if you'd like to find out more. 
But what I do know is since the Weather XM token has not yet been released, there's no way to currently accurately predict how much you're going to earn for your weather station. But they did note in the white paper that the estimated value of the weather data that each weather station is providing will equal to approximately $1 per day. So it would be reasonable to expect your rewards maybe somewhere in that ballpark. Then next they go into relocation and maintenance and being fair with your weather station. I'm not gonna go into that into detail, it's pretty standard stuff. Next they provide the roadmap, which is a long-term vision and master plan for the project. You can see here in 2022, their goal was to create a minimum vial product, which it looks like they achieved. And then this year in 2023 is to focus on weather services and a token launch, which is currently scheduled for Q4 of 2023. And then 2024 and 2025, they're really trying to establish their market position and uh, create an established data set that they can market to customers. And then 26 and 27, transitioning to a DAO, uh, to do governance for the project and then 2027 uh, really making a global impact and uh, building out the the network even further so i think some lofty goals here over the next several years but it is nice to see a long-term master plan for the project next they detail the current weather xm investors they show they raised five million dollars in seed funding in 2022 and that's via various vcs now, the big concern I have with these investors is how much runway does the company really have? Uh, and within the white paper, they detail that they currently have staff of 30 people on staff at WeatherXM. So how much runway do they have in terms of capital before they brought on money? If there's delays in this project timeline, are they going to be able to go back to the market and raise more capital? And that's just a big concern I have with any startup is being able to get to product launch and profitability before the money runs out. So it's just a concern I have in mind, but maybe it's unwarranted. So all in all, I think the team did a really good job putting together their white paper. I have my concerns in certain areas, but that's going to be the case with any project that I look at. Now, there are still some questions I have that are going to remain unanswered. For instance, what's the quality of this weather data compared to what's currently available out on the market? What will it cost customers to purchase this weather data? Will it be market competitive? Ultimately, will there be demand for this project? Or are they really just building the next helium? Metcalf's law states that the value of a telecommunications network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users of that network. If the WeatherXM team is successful at rolling out this network, they could end up creating the most comprehensive, accurate, real-time, and historical weather data set the world has ever seen. Increasing humanity's ability to forecast weather, which could save lives, save money, and potentially make the WeatherXM token very valuable. Obviously, I still have concerns with this project, but I'm excited to be involved with my weather station, and I'll continue to provide you updates. If you enjoyed this content, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.